Did we really need to be baptized? No, there's a fact of the prophecy that needed to be fulfilled, but maybe there's something more there. So, in our celebration of baptisms, we have acknowledged in the sanctuary here in that baptismal font that, the, that baptism is a communal aspect. It's a communal sacrament. It's one that we do together. No one is baptized by himself or herself, right? It's something we have to do together. In the sanctuary, we have acknowledged that it's a mutual covenant. It is the one being baptized, being either offered to the community if it's a baby, or the one being baptized as an adult is saying, I am with you in this journey. And it's the church saying, we are with you in your journey. Right? We have acknowledged this aspect of the sacrament of baptism. It's the community embracing an individual and an individual embracing the, the, the community. But there's still something else that might be drawn from the story of Jesus' baptism. So now I'm going to share something I learned very recently. And um, there will be a beautiful slide coming up over there. And that's... Um, in Arabic, and it, it means, it, it reads, Allah al al Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar means God is the greatest, or God the greatest, the greatest God. This word, Allah, the word for God, is whispered in the baby's ears in this sentence, in Alu Akbar, when a baby is born. So the first thing a Muslim baby hears is, God is great. That is the first thing. The first word that a baby hears is the word God, Allah. So I think the story can offer us some way into the story of Jesus' baptism beyond the aspect of cleansing of our sins and the communal aspect of the Holy Sacrament of Baptism. And I find that it has probably something to do with what God hears. You are the beloved. The one that I am pleased with. What do you think? Especially in the light of the Muslim practice of whispering in a baby's ears, God the greatest. God is the greatest. And the word God being the very first word a baby hears. Could it be that Jesus wanted to be baptized to be reminded of his true nature as the Son of God? Could it be that Jesus wanted to be reminded that he was God's beloved? In the last 2,000 years, there is a lot of ink spilled discussing, and a lot of blood, discussing and fighting and battling over the nature of baptism. So I, you know, I really definitely don't want to get into that discussion. There's no need for that, and I don't want to take away any of the meaning you attach to baptism as a sacrament. I don't want to take away any of the meaning your own baptism has for you. This morning I want to suggest that maybe there could be something else there and something more from the practice you went through as a baby or as an adult and the practice you encourage your children or grandchildren to go through. Maybe there is something there. And 
I only want to propose that as Jesus delighted in hearing that he was God's beloved, so we, human beings, may benefit from remembering that we are God's beloved. Yes, we may not all be Jesus and sinless as Jesus was. I'm not trying to be controversial or sacrilegious here, but we are God's beloved. For God so loved the world that God Yes, that God gave God's beloved to live as we live, to be born as we are born, to live as we live, to suffer as we suffer. And not only to stop at that, but to die as we all going to die. So we got to be God's beloved. Or else why would God give God's beloved to us? So maybe, just maybe, Jesus' baptism story is a reminder to us that we are God's beloved. In our imperfection, still we are God's beloved. In our tendencies to backslide once in a while, or quite often, or every minute, we are God's beloved. And as a, a Muslim baby is reminded five times a day, because those words that were whispered on that baby's ear will be proclaimed five times a day at least through the call to worship, because that's how the call to worship starts. God, the greatest. They get the reminder five times a day. How often do we as Christians get reminded that we are God's beloved? And so often, from the pulpit, what do we hear? You are a sinner, you're going to go to hell if you don't do this, if you don't do that. Oftentimes the reminder, even from the pulpit, is you are worthless. You don't deserve to come to those doors and be here among us. Because, well, you don't dress this way, you don't look this way, you don't live this way. You don't sing this way, you don't clap this way, you don't dance this way. Right? Your partner is this, your partner is that, your family. From the pulpit. And how often do we hear, every time we turn the radio, every time we you know, watch the TV or flip through a magazine, you are not good enough. You need to be thinner, you need to be richer, you need to be younger, you need to... How many? Right? It's never enough. So there's a lesson that we can learn from Jesus' baptism in the practice of our Muslim brothers and sisters to be reminded every day, at least a couple of times, that we are God's beloved. And yesterday I, I had a meeting in, in our annual conference center about our mission in Mozambique, and a colleague from Mozambique was visiting, and at the end, the very end of the meeting, he said, well, let me tell you something because we were talking about Nelson Mandela, and he said, there's something that Nelson Mandela said that is a, is a great reminder. And he said, I'm going to share that with you. And that is, damn you, if you think you're less than what God made you to be. Damn you, if you think you're less than what God made you to be. So brothers and sisters, damn you if you think you're not beloved, because you are. Don't believe anyone 
that comes around and tells you you're not good enough, you're not worth it, you can't be here, you should be somewhere else. You are God's beloved. And God is pleased with you. Just in case, because I won't be able to call every one of you five times every day. <laughs> when you come for communion, you're invited to remember the waters of your baptism. Actually, let's go a little bit back. To remember the water in the womb of your mother because God knitted you in the womb of your mother. And remember the waters of your baptism if you were baptized. If you were not baptized, we can do it very quickly. <laughs> All you've got to say is yes. And you're invited to take one of these. And have it in your wallet. Put it on your refrigerator door. If, if on your refrigerator door you have one of those pictures of somebody skinnier that would threaten you and torture you not to open their refrigerator, put that one too. So you have both. Right? One that says, well, you could eat a little more healthy. And don't forget, you are God's beloved. Let us reflect on this and go beyond the reflection into the practice of reminding ourselves that we are God's beloved and reminding one another as our Muslim brothers and sisters remind each other of God's greatness in their lives. Amen? Amen? Anybody wants to be baptized? <laughs> it's a standing offering. We'll stand and we we'll sing, and I think it's 2117. Amen. So let us do that. <laughs>
seated and we are now invited to share the gifts we have brought to the altar of God. our eyes to God's presence, God is in this place. With the eyes of faith we see and the Word is made visible. In communion with God we touch the Word which sustains our creation and find our true selves. The Word fills us now and is expressing us as praise. We believe that God spoke the words into existence and the worlds into existence. And we believe that when humanity had closed their ears and hearts to the divine voice, the Word became flesh, living and dying so that we could be restored as children of God. We believe that God's Holy Spirit continues to speak life to the world and calls us into relationship with God, with each other, and with our world. O oh God of self-disclosing, love. You deserve to be honored through all eternity by all beings earthly and heavenly, seen and unseen. We believe that on the night before God's ultimate love was spoken through the passionate cross, Jesus gave us a way to remember the word to hear it again. So let us now witness, watching and seeing. For in the night, Jesus took the bread, he lifted up, he broke it, and he said, take this. This is my body given to you for your salvation, for you to remember that you are my beloved. <coughs> As with the bread, Jesus took wine and spoke a word of blessing over it. Then as the wine was shared, he spoke new meaning on it. 
through the wine which we drink, God speaks. And we share in the life-renewing word whenever this bread is broken and this cup is shared. We proclaim Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and we will not cease to do this until that time when with Jesus we will partake once again. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the sacrament and the word. The world, the word made tangible, made tasty for us to share.